Uh, first off, let me uh, say congratulations to the men's basketball team on a hard fought game. Obviously, it's awesome to see um, our brothers out there, you know, out west that we're out there to compete and show the heart of the program. I'm uh, pleased with obviously the way Coach Penny Hardaway uh, handled himself and those guys showed that they were able to fought through adversity. So those are lessons for our only team uh, to learn and, and to look at moving forward. So congrats to them uh, and, and a fantastic season. They got a lot to be proud of. Now, today, day one of spring ball, man, it's exciting. And the great thing about spring ball is there's no depth charts. You just go out there and let the guys compete. Obviously, installation of a new defensive system, some new stuff on offense, and obviously trying to improve always on special teams. A lot of new faces, uh, 18 to be exact, and then some moving parts, uh, guys at different position. But uh, I thought today was fantastic. We had a beautiful morning here. Um, the guys showed up on time, ready to grind. And excited about the approach. And, you know, where I, I'll circle back to this, but, you know, at the end of practice, I asked them how many enjoyed it. And I feel like this is the best group of guys that actually love the game of football. They went out there and competed no matter what the drill was, obviously without shoulder pads on. And we were smart with the contact, but they went out there and competed and appreciated uh, the idea of getting out to spring football like we all know it and uh, excited to be out there amongst each other. I, I like this group. They're all competitive. And I told them this morning, and I'll tell them every single day, we've got to find ways to get better. What does that look like? It may be better effort, one practice. It may be better techniques. It may be a better understanding of the scheme that we're installing. And But the biggest thing is we have to take steps in the right direction. In spring practice, you don't have time to do this. You have to take incremental steps uh, to make sure you are heading in the right direction, us as individuals, me as the head coach, uh, and the entire program. But uh, today was a great one. Uh, the effort was there for sure. The excitement was there. And the attitude and the approach. But the biggest thing, we've got a lot of things to clean up. Too many balls on the ground, uh, too many missed assignments. And, and that's jo our job as coaches to get that fixed. So we see those corrections uh, heading into Tuesday's practice. So with 18 newcomers, I guess, kind of how is it? Is it more just getting guys acclimated or is it just kind of getting those guys used to so much because it is so much turnover just kind of within the first, first practice, really? Yeah, it's a combination, Evan. I think that's one of those things. And, and I've mentioned this before. I think, you know, throwing out a general number, we're looking at 33% roster turnover in a year to year basis in college football at every Division One program. And so that biggest thing is hey, okay, I understand during this drill, you're going to be over here. During this session, you're going to be over here. During this part of practice, you're going to be over here. So the organization part is just as much for the two new coordinators, for all the 18 new faces uh, at different positions, but then also, okay. And understand the scheme it's one thing to look at it on a screen on a dry erase board but then when you're going out there and it's full speed and there's somebody lining up against you with a helmet on a ball in your hands for the very first time and for a lot of them for the first time in the system for some of them since high school football um it's pretty eye-opening and it moves faster than they all think and it's a lot of hate and getting it and a lot of day one jitters that's just the nature of it uh but good news is i told them they're gonna make mistakes let's make them full speed and we got to see that today Outside of the roster changes and coaching changes, are you approaching this one any differently than you did your first one? No, you know what, but with this group is what I've done is going into this, obviously, year seven here at Memphis, but year three as a head coach, true second spring, right? We obviously knew what COVID looked like when we couldn't do this face-to-face -face stuff and it was, uh, the guys were still on break at this time. Um, but what I've told them, I told them I'm going to challenge them. I'm going to be on them. I'm going to be hard and harp on the details at every position and they know to expect it. And so the biggest thing is what I want to see in years past, sometimes you get it on a young man and all you're doing is holding them accountable to the things they say they want to do. It's this. Now, when I get on a guy, Hey, why did we do this? I want them to say, you're exactly right. This way I can do get better. And so I've let them know ahead of time. And I said, look, we can't have a bunch of, you know, nice guys and let me be the butthead. And I am, and I'm going after guys and they know that and they appreciate it because afterwards I can show them, Hey, this is why I did it. It's nothing personal. And I'm, I'm going to be as, uh, on top of the details as best of my ability, running across the field, making sure at every position. Um, and I think that's important. Our guys understand that, right? They're not just saying, man, why all of a sudden he acting like a lunatic? Most people sit there and say, oh, he's more of a teacher. Yeah, I'm going to get on him and then I'm going to teach him and show him the right way. But I think if they can have that approach and understanding this is the way we're going to do it day in and day out, um, I think it'll pay dividends for us, you know, all the way through December. I mean, how much, you know, with, with the 18 new faces you've got, your, you know, your older guys, your veterans in that locker room, kind of being that, that player's, you know, leader, how much is important is that to get those, those guys kind of on the same page? As opposed to the same yeah, well, absolutely. I think that's as, as important as anything we do is you've got guys of different age, right? We've got some six-year seniors, and we got some guys that should still be in high school. 
And I think that understanding of, hey, here's the way we do things. And I'm very fortunate we do have some of those great leaders that have been here. Those 18 new faces, okay, this is how we do things. And I told them, I told them post-practice. And the majority of the mistakes are the little things that we talk about in our program. And um, we talk about, I'm not trying to sound corny, that all in, that first L stands for little things. And some of those details we didn't get to see today, right? Whether it was a guy standing there with his helmet off or a guy not running between drills. But I want to get to the point where our vets and our leaders are saying, no, that's not our standard. That's not the way we do things. And a lot of them do it. And I love to see that. That means, hey, let them coach each other. Let them hold each other accountable. And the more and more we see that, Frank, that means we got a really good chance. What are you looking for? I mean, everybody wants to get better in spring, right, Coach? But what are... What are maybe some specific things you're looking for when we talk again in April and how does it today get that process started? Yeah, I think the biggest thing, you know, from an offensive standpoint is ball security. And I think we're obviously playing a lot of different guys. And ball security, not only – I'm not just talking about running backs falling on the football. I'm talking about offensive line being able to hold up in pass protection, you know, so the quarterback has time. You know, ball carriers holding that ball. I think that ball security issue was a major uh, factor in some of our losses last year. And so from an offense standpoint, we are going to correct it. we got to harp on it, and it's got to be – and today wasn't good enough. And so the nice thing is, hey, that's day one. we got a chance, but to talk about improvement. I want to get to the point where in that spring game, that Friday night stripes, man, that offense looks like they're efficient. They're fast. They're flying around. I know you guys get all, oh, just efficient. Don't they want more? Yes, we're going to be explosive, but we also have to own the football, right, because we can be explosive as we want, but if we don't – own the football and, and, and turn the ball over all the darn time. We're going to have plenty of issues anyways. But that's the number one thing I got to continue to see. Guys understanding that, uh, some of the new terminology, being able to play fast on offense, you know, special teams. I, I thought we, we played a lot of guys there. I need to see the collective group. I've already challenged the wide receivers. I got to see you meet more involved in special teams, the running backs, challenging different position groups to be uh, involved in all four phases. And then defensively, it's a new scheme. And so what we have to do is they're going to learn something new tomorrow. They're going to, and every day is a new day. Some of these guys on offense, even though there may be some change of verbiage, it's like riding the bicycle. They'll just get back on it and, and have a better understanding. Uh, defensively, okay, now i got to be able to stack what I learned on day one to day two all the way up through the end. I mean, we're going to give them as much as they can handle. We want to see them be able to play fast. Uh, what I don't want to look around is practice seven guys are standing around not knowing what they do. If they do, i got to get with Coach Barton and say, hey, let's knock this and in pair backs, we can play fast. With that, we also have to learn how to play physical and defense and be able to continue with great effort. Going back to the ball security uh, with the quarterback for one, uh, you look at Grant, Grant, you know, more, more experience he played you know, at Arizona. You look at Seth uh, coming into his sophomore season. How has he been, you know, in terms of recognizing different coverages, you know, at making that jump from, from last year? Yeah, and I, I think we saw, and you may, not necessarily from a statistics standpoint, but if you watch Seth, and go back and watch him in the spring to fall camp all the way to the end of the season, all right, and to the way his practice prep was uh, for the Hawaii Bowl, it was night and day. And I think, you know, whether that the stats necessarily showed or necessarily wins and losses may or not been, but he was one of those that grew week every week and had a better understanding. And then sometimes, because he was so enthralled and through this, right, remember he won the state championship as a 17-and-a-half-year-old or whatever age he was, and literally went home, packed his bags, and came up here. And so it was a whirlwind for him that freshman season, right? I mean, there was nonstop everything for him. He got a chance in January, catch his breath, come back. Okay, let's watch and let's, let's see the mistakes I made. Let's see the great things I did. And he was able to learn, okay, we can sit down now in a controlled environment, 72 degrees. He knows the offense already anks it back and says, okay, Seth, this is what the cover three safety was doing here. Where were your eyes? Oh, now I see it. It's a lot easier when you get a chance to come back. Okay. Now going to spring ball, much more confidence in what he's trying to do as a quarterback. And then with Brandon, uh, I know he had some fumbling uh, issues with last season. Now when the season was over, you know, were you guys kind of able to unpack that a little bit more during this time? Absolutely. And I, and, I, and I was in the running back room this morning. I told him, guys, that's the stuff that we've got. To, it doesn't matter if you run a 4 2 If you're fumbling the ball, uh, right, uh, you give us no chance. And he, he was able to sit back and watch his fumble. Okay, why are the fumbling issues occurring? And for all of us, and what is it? Is it a left elbow tight? Is it a lack of a, a drill that we need to do? Is it a, a focus deal? Um, and so we looked at all that and, you know, talked with each individual. This is something that you have to be, and it has to be in their mind. Now, you don't want them sitting there staring at the ball and running with two arms, and now all of a sudden he's running out four nine forty and scared to death of just fumbling, and we're getting one yard in a cloud of dust. No, that's not what we want. So when he gains confidence that he can own the ball and have ball security day in and day out, whether it's a, a receiving the a ball in a catch or a kickoff return or just taking a handoff in the backfield, that will allow him to understand now he plays more confidence, now he's more dangerous as a runner. 
speaking of the running backs, obviously you're out there with them. What's it like for you? Because obviously you were running in corner for three years, but what is it like kind of like overseeing them now to practice and kind of having that as a responsibility? Yeah, look, I, I, they're they're all smart. They're all experienced. That's one thing. It's not like I was sitting there saying, oh, my gosh, I'm going in there with a bunch of guys that have no idea about this offensive system. In fact, uh, my ego is not big enough for this morning. There was three times I stopped and said, okay, what do you guys what, tell me again what we're supposed to Cool. That's great. And I, and I, and I appreciate that. And the honesty, we also had some open discussions. Hey, this is how we've done in the past. Don't you guys feel like this is, yes, that's great coach. That's something we wanted. Perfect. And that's one of those things is as we're going through the installation, there are some things that we feel like we could tweak maybe to make us better and maybe seeing it from a different perspective from mine, right? Obviously a lot of my time was spent up in the trenches with those guys, but to be able to pull myself back out and say, okay, guys, from the running back room, what can we do to help ourselves be more productive? And it was great for me to be in there. I, I'm excited to continue to be in that room around those guys. Um, I think they like that interaction because now they're all of a sudden they're hearing it from a different voice. Obviously, you know, they had a, a lot of success with Coach Jones and appreciated his teachings, but sometimes it's a, a different teaching element that they'll be appreciative of as well. Easy enough. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you all for coming out. Really do.